So here's our um, rate law, but we don't know what this exponent is. Now let's write down what the rate law would be, say, for this proposed mechanism. What would um, the uh, rate law be for uh, this proposed mechanism? Do we know what the exponent would be? No. No. Wouldn't it be 2 because it's an elementary step, so, that's, so we're allowed to use it? Very good. That's the exact right point. Remember, why couldn't we use this number? Why couldn't we use the overall reaction? Because it didn't tell us how the reaction was actually happening. How can we, how can the, if the, since this doesn't tell us what's actually happening, it can't tell us the precise rate. But now we're imagining that this is actually what's happening. The 203s are bumping into each other, so we can use this to get the right exponent. And the exponent would be? You can see uh, that's the kind of the point of saying that this was bimolecular by giving us an exponent of two. Uh, what would we say is the order of this reaction in the ozone? Second order, so bimolecular is exponent of two, second order in the ozone. The order is uh, the exponent, basically, or the sum of the exponents. So here we've got one exponent. Well, you can see how students start to get confused because sometimes the instructor says that you can get the exponent from the coefficients and sometimes they say that you can't get the exponent from the coefficients. Well, it's true. You just have to know when you can and when you can't. That's why we have to be so punctilious about distinguishing between reactions and mechanisms. They might seem similar. Even though I've written the same exact thing in these two cases, we're interpreting it differently, so we write the rate laws differently. Okay. In fact, that's another definition for an elementary step. Some textbooks say that an elementary step is a step that you can use to get the exponents for the rate law. If you could use that step to get the exponents, then it must be an elementary step because it must be telling you what's actually happening. Okay. So uh, this would be our proposed rate law in this case. Now, um, one of the things then is we, we were asking, how can you figure out what mechanism is right or plausible? Because we can't actually see things happening on the molecular level. Well, now we've started to hint. How can you tell what is the correct mechanism for a reaction? Well, how could we test if this was the correct mechanism? Well, we know if this were the correct mechanism, this would be the correct rate law. So by finding out what the exponent is? From the experimental data, like you learned to do on Friday. You can run an experiment, and you can get a table of experimental data. Maybe you guys are going to have to do that in your lab. You can run an experiment and get the experimental data. And from the experimental data, you can see what this exponent really is. And then you can check whether that matches what this mechanism would predict that the exponent should be. And if they're the same, that means maybe this really is the right mechanism. Now, the frustrating thing for scientists was it doesn't prove it. Maybe there's something else that would also give the right rate law, but at least that would say this was possible. So we can at least take, see if this is possible by seeing if it's giving us the right um, exponent. So that's how this matches up with the stuff that you did on Friday. OK, so we could run the experiment and see whether the experimental exponent matches this. Now, let's write down what the rate law would be for this step of this mechanism. What would the rate law be? for this step of this mechanism. Anything else? What would this exponent be? Yeah, so we don't need to write it down, or we could write it down to emphasize that it has an exponent of one. Is it legal to get this exponent from this coefficient? Yes, because this is a proposed elementary step. Here we had a unimolecular elementary step, so an exponent of one. What would be the rate law or the rate expression for this second step? What should this exponent be? One. One. Because this coefficient is one. Remember, if we don't write the coefficient, it's a coefficient of one. And what should this exponent be? One. one. Because again, there's a coefficient of one. Why is it legal to use these coefficients? Because this was proposed as an elementary step. So this is what's really happening. So it really can predict what the rate would be. Uh, let's see, before I forget, um, so this tells us how fast this step would go. And this tells us how fast this step would go. There's no reason that their rate constants have to be the same. So I need to use different symbols to show that those rate constants could be the same. I could call this k1 because it's the rate constant for the first step. And I could use k2. This is very common notation to use different rate constants for different steps. So we'll need that when we're working with new problems. I didn't need to worry about that in this mechanism because there was only one step. 
rate constant for the first step, rate constant for the second step. By the way, notice how careful you have to be with subscripts here. We have a bunch of oxygens and we don't want to confuse them. So you always have to say is it O3, O2, or just O. They look the same, but they're all different things. So um, what would be the order of this rate law in the ozone? What's the order in the ozone? First order, because the exponent of the ozone is one. What's the order in the oxygen atom? First order. And what's the overall order of this step? Two, because then you add the exponent. So there's different questions you can be asked about order. You can be asked about the order of a particular species or the overall order. So you have to read the question carefully to make sure that you're answering the right question. Um, this is unimolecular in ozone, unimolecular in oxygen atom, but it's bimolecular overall. Okay, and then again we might ask, how can we tell whether this is really right? Well, we could try to test whether these rates match this, but now this is much more complicated because we can predict what the rate of this step would be and what the rate of this step would be, but it's not so obvious how to predict what the overall rate would be from these individual rates. That's what we're going to learn how to do today. So we're not quite ready for that yet. This we can analyze much more easily because there was only one step. If this is the rate of the one step, that would be the rate of the overall reaction. But if this has a rate of this raw and this is a rate of this law, what's the rate of the overall reaction? Well, that's not obvious. That's what we're going to start learning, or you might remember from the, from the class previous. <coughs> ah, more terminology. Um, what would we call O3? That's a starting material. What would we call O2 here? What would we call the O? Okay, so that's good that you're familiar. So what is an intermediate? An intermediate is something that is produced in one step, but then completely used up in another step. The intermediate, so a starting material is something that you start with and then is used up. A product is something that you don't start with and is created. An intermediate is something that is produced in one step and used up in a subsequent step. So generally, if you can cancel that thing in your mechanism, that's a sign that it's an intermediate. Notice that if you look at the overall reaction, you would have no clue that the intermediate ever existed. <coughs> the mechanisms have intermediates, but the overall reaction doesn't. The intermediate is a substance that's formed and used up in the overall reaction. You mean in class, if there was an intermediate in the rate, we have to change it so it's not in there? Yeah, that's one thing that we're going to be getting to in a couple minutes. That's exactly right. So that's why we need to know those words, because you deal with them in different ways. Um, so the basic point that you were making is, ultimately, you want your rate law to just involve the starting materials and possibly the products. But you don't want it to involve the intermediates. And we're going to review how to, how to deal with that. So can I erase this now? All right. So we never did figure out which was the correct mechanism here, because we're not, we don't have enough skills yet to analyze um, this reaction. So we'll have to put this aside and uh, do some problems.